This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Shalom Ubaha. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. From heaven, every time before I come to to speak, I know my my main mission before talking, before of opening my mouth and teaching is that I need to connect myself to the will of Hashem really to try to understand what Hashem wants for me what Hashem wants me to talk about there are so many subjects and concepts that are open for discussion and we can talk and, and, and we can bring amazing stories and examples from the Torah, from Midrashim, from many books. But the will of Hashem is something that is written between the lines. We need to aim our heart deep into the will of Hashem that we really going to find His holy desire that is an inner desire, that is a hidden desire to help us to save our lives. For an example, many people can say, I know the right way. You can find the job, go be a lawyer, go be a doctor, go... Try to go in that same route that thousands of other people went in that route. And over there you'll find happiness. But you'll go and learn so many years and in the end you won't find no comfort and no happiness. Another person will tell you, listen, you must keep Shabbat, you need to be religious, you need to, or you're obligated, and you'll do it. And you'll eat kasher, kosher food, and you'll keep Shabbat. And still you'll struggle with happiness. You'll find it hard to find. And people will tell you, in that moment, in that place, I don't know what to tell you. There's no advice. If you're already keeping Shabbat, and you're eating kosher, and you're giving your maiser, and you, you, you go to the mikveh, and you cover your head, what else can you do? Like, lack of advice. Oh, you need to wake up midnight, you need to say tikkun chatzot. Okay, I'm waking up at midnight. Davenet, going early in the morning, praying and still can't find happiness, so what's the advice? So they'll tell you there's no advice, we don't know. Suddenly you're going to find yourself stuck in front of a dead end with no way, with no root. So how come we're finding ourselves struggling and getting into those dead ends? Because the Creator, He wants us not to drop our unique light, the light of our souls, and that we will not give up on the clear and deep message of the Creator to us as individuals. He's talking to us not only through the verses, not only through the words of Chachamim, but also between the lines, the flaming white fire is paving its way, carving its way deep into our souls. And the Creator is communicating with us as individuals and calling us from within and letting us know exactly what He wants us to do in our lives. And He's talking to us in a language that we can understand. This is why before I'm coming to teach, I'm trying to see what Hashem wants me to talk about. I can see in this generation, in front of my eyes, thousands and thousands of people that are struggling, that are suffering. People that are in such deep sorrow, such deep pain. And it's not a topic, it's not an issue, it's not a subject. It's our reality. 
we are facing challenges that no generation faced before. Even in our own spirits, even in our own life experience, we see people in their 30s, in their 40s, and they feel like they're over 90. People are so tired, feel so old already, like they've been through thousands of lifetimes. People are struggling with things over and over, again and again, and cannot find source for relaxation, for comfort. Trying to work and nothing works, and trying to work on their peace in their houses to stabilize their families and cannot find comfort, and trying to go on vacations and only troubles. Try to go to simple life order, shopping and cleaning and just simple things and cannot do anything. The house is always a mess and there is always things to return to the stores and always don't know which to store to go and always it's blocked and always it's, it's, you have issues and obstacles and difficulties on the tiniest things in our lives, we cannot go to the kitchen and say shakol niyabid on a cup of water without failing in, 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 in hundreds of things on our way. And we're all experiencing those difficulties and those challenges and people are literally losing their minds. People don't find advice. And when they're trying to go and to find advice in the loving arms of the Creator, and the rabbis and teachers and friends are telling them, you must do tshuva, you need to come back to Hashem, keep Shabbat, eat kosher, it will purify your life. And no one can contradict those advice because they are real. We are obligated. Those things are, are the foundations of our faith. We believe in Mount Sinai, we believe in, in, in Matan Torah, that we received the Bible, that we've been obligated as one nation. We believe. But after putting all of our heart into keeping Shabbat and eating kasher and going to the mikveh and doing everything we need, women covering their heads, men are putting filin, learning Torah, going to, to synagogues, waking up, morning, mincha, mairi. And in the end of the month, in the end of the day, we're finding ourselves with more and more piles and piles of difficulties and blaming ourselves and hating ourselves and losing our minds. So we're asking for an advice, so what should I do? Tell me! I remember myself going and asking my rabbis hundreds of times, tell me what to do. I will do whatever you say, and I know myself, I will do. I told him, tell me not to sleep, I'm not going to sleep. Tell me to finish all Zohar Kadosh, tell me to finish Likutei Mawan every day, tell me to wake up Chatzor, tell me to wake up not, whatever I know myself, I'll do it. Tell me. If I know myself that I have the ability to do whatever my teacher will tell me, whatever a righteous man that I will believe in him will guide me to follow his advice, I kept everything my rabbis told me, always. Even when things that they told me were crazy and impossible to keep, I did it, I know myself. But in the end, after doing it, I didn't find no comfort. I didn't find no happiness. And even if I've been saved, and even if I found my salvation, and even if I bought that huge house, and even if I got married, and even if I have wonderful children, and all the things that a person can dream of, great. In the end of the day, you can still find yourself lack of simple happiness. You're not relaxed. You're not calm and you're not satisfied. And the question is why? I'm doing everything I need to do. At least I'm trying. I see myself, I'm trying. Waking up in the mornings, putting my tefillin, davening shacharit, going to the mikveh, keeping to our mitzvot, eating kosher, keeping Shabbat, functioning based on the will of Hashem. Not sinning, not talking Lashon Ara, not looking at, at, at filthy pictures, not, not watching TV, doesn't watch movies, doesn't do anything wrong. Why I'm not happy? Why a person cannot find his comfort and his complete happiness? Because the Creator wants from you to connect yourself to Him from within and not based on external connections, not based on books, not based on synagogues, not based on other people's opinions and methods and ways. He wants you 
to be connected to him from within, from inside. Because the Creator is telling us, Betoch Ami Anochi Yashayot. I live inside my nation, inside their hearts, inside their minds, inside their souls, inside of you. This is your inner connection to the Creator and actually your only connection to the Creator. Now the question is how to connect ourselves from within. Because even if you follow advice of big righteous rabbis and teachers that commanded you and gave you the best advice of them all, and they told you only things that have been established in Mount Sinai that have been taught to us by the mouth of the Creator Himself. And they will tell you only the most purest and clarified and clean and, and sift things of them all. In 100% those advice are right. If you will connect yourself to those advice only from outside, and soon we will explain it a little bit more what it means, you will not find true happiness. Only if you will find your inner connection to that mitzvah, to that good action, you will find comfort and satisfaction while keeping it. Now it doesn't mean that if you're not happy you don't need to keep, you need to do as much as you can. But we're not allowed as human beings, as souls, to give up on our inner connection to the Creator and to satisfy ourselves only with physical connection, running and doing and fulfilling our, our obligations. Because by that we're fulfilling the obligations and the expectations of other people, but not of the real Creator Himself. Because the Creator Himself wants you to have an inner connection with Him from inside. And He wants you from inside to be with Him, to live your life with Hashem. That you will have the ability and find the power and the understanding on how to keep that fantastic main advice that has been given to us in the simple mitzvah of Kriyat Shema. Ve'ahavta et Hashem elokecha. You need to love Hashem, that He is your God. Bechol levavcha. With all your heart, with your good inclination, your good and holy desires, and with your bad inclination, evil inclination, with your lusts and bad desires, even in those places you need to find how you will love Hashem. How can you love Hashem? How can a person love Hashem when he's falling, when he's failing, in filthy things, in things that he feels so embarrassed and lost, failing in those things, feels so dark and so alone and so broken and so humiliated, and should love Hashem? How can you love Hashem in those places? And Hashem is telling you, Bechol nafshecha, with all the power of your spirit, the power of your soul, Bechol modecha, with all the tools that I give you, with all the wealth, with all the money, with all the tools, with your connections, with people, you should talk about Hashem when you wake up in the morning and you should think about Him. And with your family, when you get into the house, when you walk away from the house, when you're traveling, when you're in your home, sitting in your sofa, on your sofa, all the time you need to have Hashem in your mind. So it doesn't mean that you need to lose your mind, that you need to become crazy. It means that you should feel the Divine Spirit that walks with you while you're walking. You cannot change the way you walk. You need to bring Hashem to walk with you. You cannot start going to find Hashem. Where is Hashem? Hashem is everywhere. You think you'll find Hashem in a synagogue, you'll find Hashem in the Beit Midrash, you'll find Hashem in the Holy Books. I can tell you that Hashem is inside the yellow pages. You can find Him. The Talmud, the Gemara is asking, telling you, if a person will come and ask you, where is your God? You need to tell him in the largest city in Rome, in, 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 in Manhattan, you can find Hashem. In the Times Square, you can find Hashem. How can you find Hashem with all the distractions? Only from within, only from inside. You won't see Him in the signs, you won't see Him in the streets. You can see Him inside when you ignore all the surroundings. When you look only deep inside, look deep into your own eyes. 
ושילומת רשעים תראה, and you'll see the evil ones falling. You will see how they don't have no stability, how darkness will never rise, will never stand against the power of good and the light. But when you look outside to the world, you see righteous people, ill and sick, and evil people, strong and powerful. Outside in the world, you cannot see real justice. Real justice you can find only within, only from inside. And when you feel lost and you feel trapped and you don't know what to do and how to connect yourself to the Creator, that's the moment that you should focus your mind into your soul, into the depths of your spirit and to close your eyes and to ask Hashem. To ask for Hashem. Not to ask requests. To ask for Hashem to be with you. To ask from that spirit, from the Creator Himself. To be part of your life that you will never forget Him. The power of our mind, the power of our will is so strong that we, by the power of our soul, can change nature. We can change the physical rules of the external world, of the outside. But only when we are bringing water from the endless spring of our souls, only when we're expressing that solid faith of our spirits, only then we can make real changes in this world, in that dark world, in the world of life. Only when we are connecting ourselves to the true light that lives inside of us, the endless eternal Creator that lives inside of you in a way that is above the power of your imagination to grab and to hold and to understand. In a spiritual way that even angels cannot grasp and cannot get. You can get it through your spiritual eyes. If you will throw yourself into the depths of your soul and focus in your inside. Now the way to do that is very simple. And I can use those words and it will be a fantastic philosophy and amazing wisdom until a person will take those words in a practical way and start working on it. It will be a wisdom. It will always stay a nice philosophy that is written, that been taught, that been told. It won't be the light of your soul until you will take those things seriously and start working on yourself. The way to connect yourself to the Creator is to connect yourself to the truth. Now again and again and again how you should connect yourself to the truth. It's not a slogan. It's not a word. The truth is your inner honesty. Is your honest, humble will not to lie and to connect yourself to the will of the Creator. Now, we all have those senses that we feel about ourselves if we're lying or if we're telling the truth. If we're acting out of a happy heart and a wishing soul with a good and great desire to do good or that we have negative motives that are pushing us to do certain things. Now negative motives can push you to do things that will look amazing for an example, you're afraid of your parents, you're afraid of the community, you're afraid of people, and you're obligated not to be scared of people. It's a commandment. You're not allowed to be scared of human beings no matter who they are. You must have only fear from heaven. Only an inner fear that based on Yirat Shamayim, real holy and pure fear from heaven, that is very close and similar to admiration, to complete faith in Hashem. Something that relates to honor and respect and appreciation and gratitude, much more than fear from cruelty or evil power. It's the negative side of all that darkness. So, from people you're not allowed to be scared of, 
But the fear from people sometimes can push you to the synagogue, to keep Shabbat, to accept Shabbat early, to go to the mikveh, to, the, to, to go and, and do many things, to go and set your schedules and learning to live every day, to do amazing things outside. But you will do all those things based on negative feeling. So while doing those things, you will not pull light and results won't be good because of your learning, because of the way you function, because you will go with your dark and black bitterness into those places and in your face it will be seen and people will be so happy really to communicate with you and you will be negative because the inside of yours won't come out of your goodwill and your desire for life. But the Torah has been given to us to live v'chai bahem that we should live while keeping Torah and mitzvot. And life is, is happiness, and life is satisfaction, and life is all wonderful qualities that we desire to have, holy wealth and health and, 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 and joy and satisfaction from life. All those wonderful things are, are, are supposed to be part of our path when we are connecting ourselves to the Creator in the path of truth. Like the, the verse is saying, Yesharim, when you keep the ways of Hashem in a straight way, the words of Hashem in a straight way, Mesamchelev, they will bring happiness to your heart. You'll have a happy heart. So if you're not happy, so something is missing. What is missing? That you're afraid of people. That you let your fear control and run your life. And then based on your anger, on your fear, on your anxieties, on your sadness, on your weaknesses, you are setting a path and a route in your life and you are taking yourself to gray areas, to twilight zones, to dark places, that you cannot find happiness in those places, even if everyone around you are crowning and declaring on those places that they are the most fantastic places in the world, the holiest ones, the most beautiful ones, the most charming ones, the most pleasant ones, and you don't feel that joy. Why you don't feel that joy? Because the light that is supposed to push you is, is, is covered with sadness, with fear, with, with depression. So you need to connect yourself to the truth of the motives, of the reasons, to your actions. And then to do as much as you can to connect yourself to what that you believe that is right and true from an honest place, from a good place. And you have those tools inside of you to know exactly why are you acting in a certain way and why you are doing certain things. And you need to check yourself all the time and by that you will find Hashem. Because Hashem is the truth. And when you will connect yourself to your inner truth, you're not going to find the truth. You will find Hashem. The truth is the link to Hashem. When you got the truth, you found Hashem. You'll find blessing. You'll find happiness. You'll find satisfaction. You'll find light. You'll find illumination. You will bloom and grow and, and, and be happy. You will live. You'll find life. You'll find the source of life. You'll find Him. You'll find the Creator that is creating your reality. You will find Him. You will find comfort. When you will attach yourself to the truth of your own heart, to your own honesty, you will connect yourself through that, through your own honesty, to the Creator Himself. And then you'll find the ability to make wonders. There is a code in this world. And we need to break that code. We need to find the truth in every situation. And if you will investigate all the way until you reach the real truth, you'll find the Creator, you'll find the reason for that creation. Even in a horrible situation, even in very hard challenges, 
even in, in, in certain scenes in life that you will feel like no one can explain to me why that horrible thing just happened. If you will investigate all the way without stopping because of your sadness, because of your fear to deal with the answers that you might get, if you will go with your inner desire to find out the real truth of every situation and situation, what that you will find is the Creator Himself and the reason for every action and reaction in this world. And you will find true comfort and deep understandings. You will break the secret. You will break the code. And you will deliver the light of the Creator out from the darkness. Out from all those curtains that are blocking the light of Hashem. You will find the way to deliver the light of the Creator in a way that will bring wonders and miracles out to the world. But for that you need to have your passion and your desire for the truth. And not to surrender when it's hard. Not to surrender when it's tough. Not to surrender when it hurts. You need to go all the way with your inner investigation and to be a person of truth. To be a real warrior. And not to give up because it's hard. Not to give up because it's painful. And it reminds me of other things. And I don't want to feel those feelings. No, go search deeper into those feelings. Into those emotions. And break the code. When you will break the code by confronting your fears. And dealing with your sadness. And not giving up to all those dark forces that tries to reject you from the truth. You will find it and it will heal you. It will give you answers to your deepest questions that you're afraid to deal with. Why people cannot go to sleep at night? Why people are suffering? Why people need to check their doors if it's locked or not seven times? Why people need to go back again and again over and over to the garage to check if they lock their car or not? Why people are terrified all of the time checking where is my mobile, where is my keys, where are my glasses, where is my wallet, where is my money. Seven times in the same way to the grocery store and back seven times he's checking where is his iPhone. Why? Because the iPhone is so precious to you? No. Because you cannot deal with the thoughts that you will have if you will put your iPhone for five minutes in the drawer. If you will lose your iPhone for five minutes, you'll have to confront your crazy thoughts and you don't want to deal with that. That's why you're looking for your phone all the time. That you'll have something to occupy your mind with that you won't have to think. You're afraid to think and you don't want to feel. So that's why you're playing with your phone and you're playing with your lighter and you're playing with your cigarettes and you're playing with your hair and you're playing with your jacket, always fixing your belt and checking your wallet, always to have something in your mind. Why? Because you don't want to think. Why you don't want to think? Because you know what is hidden over the, the truth and you're afraid of it. You know why you're afraid of it? Only because of one reason. It's not frightening at all. Only because that there is a black, dark, evil angel that calls the angel of death, the devil, that he is scared of you much more than you're scared of him. And he knows that evil inclination that if you will go all the way with your investigation, you will find out that it, all, that it is all good. That it's all Hashem. That there is one answer that is called faith. Emuna, to all your questions, that there is a reason and a purpose to all your difficulties, to all your challenges, to all your ups, to all your downs, and it's called Hashem. And that huge angel is in a mission, and it's his job to reject you from finding out the answer to all your questions, to find the salvation and a solution to all your domestic problems. It's only one thing. To become a real Baal Tshuva. To do a complete Tshuva. To make a real comeback to Hashem. To come back to Hashem. 
to find Hashem, to find the truth about every situation. But because that, that angel is so strong and stubborn to reject you from completing your mission and find the truth, that is only one and simple truth. So he is distracting your thoughts and terrifying you and offering to you different offerings and attempting you in thousands of thousands of temptations to take your mind away from that investigation to find the truth. The simple answer to all your questions. There is only one and you cannot find it in the books. Even if it's written in the books, you won't find it. You can find it only within, only inside. You can read it in the book, but you cannot find it. You cannot enjoy. I have water in my fridge, but I don't have access to my fridge. Your fridge is inside. The water are inside. You can see guidings and advice written in the books how to bring that bucket that you have into your deep inner well and to bring out water from the depths of your soul. You will receive the directions. You will receive the orders in the book. The book won't help you to bring out the buckets and to purify your hands and to purify your mind with your inner water, the water of your soul. Only while you taking that brave decision to focus in your deep, deep, deep inside, searching for an answer from within, looking for the real Creator and not following other descriptions and opinions and methods and ways that have been taught to us by other people that might even themselves never found Hashem, just quoting and telling and saying that they did, and they don't really know where they're holding. Some of them are evil and corrupt people that are allowing themselves to teach and to preach and to do whatever they want, and they're doing it only from selfish will and desire for honor and money and power. And even if in their dark and, and, and evil mind they have some hope to have a share in the world to come and merits on merits of making Balet Shuva and making students, and it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. There is no connection to, to, between those ideas of people to the real desire of the Creator. And for a simple example, I'll tell you, you're not allowed to hurt the emotions of people. You're not allowed to insult people. You're not allowed to destroy people's emotions. Now, if as a rabbi you go and you step on people's heads, which share you want to have in the world to come? Because you learn Torah? How do you think that that Torah will protect you in Judgment Day? In front of people that you destroyed their lives. People that will cry out their eyes that you ruined their lives, their, their Shlom Bayit, that you destroyed their families. You think you'll have a share in the world to come because of thousands of pages of Gemara that you learn? It cannot protect you from sorrow that you cause to other people. Until those people will forgive you on the sorrow that you put them through, there's no forgiveness from heaven. How do you think that the Creator can forgive you on something that you did to another person before that, that person will say, I forgive him? No way! Impossible! Never gonna happen. First of all, you need to ask for forgiveness from the people that you hurt them. You need to fix things, ben adam between you to your friends. First of all, derech eretz Torah, manners, not to shame people, not to insult people, not to rebuke people, not to destroy people, not to make fun out of people, not to go and talk lashon around people. Talking bad things on some other people without knowing them at all, without checking things. Who can fix those things? How can you fix it? By being called a rabbi, by being called a teacher, by being called righteous, gaon, genius. Titles, only names, with no real solid importance, with no real, no reality, no foundation, no stability, no power, no real existence. Because what did Hashem, the creator of the world, really wants from us 
is the intention of our hearts. And if our hearts are not pure, and if we're not aiming to keep God's will and really to commit ourselves to Him and to follow His desire, His will, <laughs> we're separated from Him. Even if we are so-called Talmidei Chachamim and learning Torah and sitting and functioning and doing whatever that people think that we are something unique. If our heart is not aimed to the real source of good and our intentions are not honest and pure, it's nothing. We're not doing anything. A person should really find a way to connect himself to the Creator from within, to try to listen to the will and desire of Hashem. Hashem, what do you really want from me? Accept of the obligations and accept of the rules, accept of synagogues and Bet Knesset and Bate Midrash and Shabbat and Kashrut, accept of all those wonderful gifts that you gave me, those tools that you gave me to wake me up and to remind me that I need to commit myself to you. What is my mission? What do you really want from me? You have a neighbor that is fighting with his wife. You have neighbors that they are poor and you see their children that are so poor. You see other situations in life. You are not allowed to ignore those things that the Creator is showing you. You see a violent person. You see a cruel person hitting someone, abusing someone. You have a mission. Or else the Creator wouldn't open your eyes, wouldn't open your ears to witness those situations. This is your path. And you need to function corresponding to the guiding hand of the Creator that is guiding you in your life. And if you see crooked and bent things, you need to fix them. If certain things around you are wrong, you have the responsibility to fix those things and not to be scared of people, not to be scared of human beings. Just to be strong and to hold yourself to the Creator. Even when Moses went to receive the Torah from Mount Sinai, Hashem put Moses standing in a situation confronting angels that made out of fire. And those angels wanted to kill Moses. They wanted to kill him. Who are you, flesh and bones, wants to come and take the Torah? Hashem told Moses, you need to answer them. You need to confront them and answer them. Moses told Hashem, how can I do that? They made out of fire and I'm flesh and bone. With the breath of their mouths, they can burn me alive. Hashem told him, Echoz Hold in my throne of honor and answer them. You should bring yourself closer to the throne of honor as much as you can to strengthen yourself in Hashem. And to tell yourself, I need to do my mission, I need to do my job. I have my mission. And I need to fulfill it. And I need to do what that I need to do. Without giving up. Without backing off. Because of the fears and the stress and the pressure. Just to strengthen yourself in the faith that the Creator is with you and He loves you and He wants you to succeed. And if He opened your eyes to see something, it's because He wants to give you the power to fix that thing completely. And if He woke you up to see certain things that are bent and twisted, and He put in your heart to feel that something is wrong, that something is evil, it's because that you have the potential power to go and to make changes in those places. Even if people around you are scared. Even if people around you are terrified. Even if people around you rather to hide themselves and to freeze themselves from acting, from moving. If you have a flaming soul that is willing to commit itself to the will of Hashem, there is nothing else that you should do with your life except for that. You should throw yourself into the flaming fire, into the depths of the sea, to do and to keep God's will. And for that you must attach yourself to the real true motive of yours. To check yourself, why am I doing the things that I do? 
What is the real reason that I'm waking up in the morning? Why is the man I'm putting tefillin? Why is the person I'm keeping Shabbat? Why is the woman I'm covering my head? Why am I putting tzitzit? Why am I eating kasher? Why do I want to convert? Why do I want to do tshuva? Why do I want to get married? Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to have children? Why do you want to have children? People rather to cry and to whine and to complain. I'm not married and I don't have children and I don't know and I'm suffering and I'm not supposed to suffer so much. Check yourself. Check your real reason. Why do you want to get married? Check the truth. Hashem is holding you back from getting married. Hashem is holding you back from having children. Hashem is holding you back from being rich. Hashem is holding you back from succeeding in your exams. Hashem is holding you back from your dreams and your goals. Not only people, not your parents, not those neighbors. Hashem, there is no one except of Him. Confront Him. Confront yourself. Deal with your fears and ask yourself, you know what? Hashem, He didn't give me children yet. Why? I want to know why. And ask yourself those questions. And the answers that you will bring in the first step doesn't necessarily the real answers. Check. I found an answer. I'm blaming myself. Is that blaming because I sinned, because I messed up, because I disappointed Hashem, because Hashem doesn't love me? Is that the real answer? How can I contradict verses that are describing the love of Hashem as an unconditional love to His creations? If the Creator was crying on the evil Egyptians that they had only one intention to go and kill innocent people, and the Creator was crying on their death, when they were drowning in the depths of the Red Sea, so how can He won't care about me? How can it be that He won't love me? And especially when He said that He loves me, that it's written, that His love and His mercy is on all of His creations. So first of all, my first assumption that He doesn't love me is not true. Okay, but I sin. I know that I sin. Okay, so there is a solution. You can do tshuva. Learn how to do tshuva. You need to confess on your sins. Great, go confess. Go, find a quiet place. Talk to Hashem. Hashem, you know I sinned. I messed up. I did A, I did B, I did C. And my heart was not pure at all. And my intentions were horrible. And my desires and my confusion. Okay, confess. Now after confessing, finish your confession. Still you think Hashem is angry at you? Still I think Hashem is upset? No, you cannot. Because Hashem told us that if we are doing tshuva, if we will confess on our sins, He atones. He erases it completely. And if we did that tshuva based on love, out of our love to Hashem, and our desire to do good, so not only that we are clean from that sin and from all kinds of blame, also, we have the merit of doing tshuva. And all the weight of that sins become to be our merit. It becomes schuyot. It's your merit. It's your privilege that you came out of that darkness. That you were able to be honest and to stand and to confess and to open your heart. So now where you're holding? You're holding as a righteous man. Even higher than a righteous man. Because you did tshuva. So if you did tshuva and still Hashem doesn't give you the things that you're willing to receive, so what is the real answer? Why really Hashem does not answer your prayers yet? Why still Hashem is holding you back, back from your complete salvation? Don't be scared to find the answer. The answer will heal you. The answer will give meaning to your life. The answer will shine the light of the Creator from the darkest situations in your life. That you will find real answers to your deep questions that doesn't let you rest, that doesn't let your mind rest. Don't be scared to confront your thoughts. Deal with them. Go all the way. And if you find that it's too hard, be honest with that as well. And tell Hashem, Hashem, it's too hard. Hashem, it's very hard. Hashem, I find it very painful. Hashem, heal me. 
Hashem, I want to feel your love. Hashem, it's too much for me to handle. I need you to comfort me. I need you to let me feel loved and respected and honored. And with that honest conversation, with that honest prayer, you'll find true happiness and you'll find answer and cure to all of your weakness and to all of your doubts and struggles. You'll find Hashem. You'll find blessing in your life. But it is only a reward of a person that will go all the way with his desire for truth. All the way. Like there's no other option for you except of going all the way. A friend of mine told me, my wife, she's rebuking me. And she's telling me things that I don't understand. I don't understand what she wants when she rebukes me. I told him, there's no solution to your situation. If you're honest and you really don't get the message, there is no other solution except of you keep on wanting and wanting and wanting to understand what she has to say. It's the only way. Sometimes the way takes one hour to get there. Sometimes it takes a year. Sometimes it can take a decade. Certain ways are taking more than 2,000 years for redemption. There are certain things that takes time in life and only your inner will and your solid desire for completion, for the truth, for real justice to take place in life, in this world, will bring you there. Only your inner desire for the real will of Hashem will bring you to find Hashem in all your dark spots, in all your dark places. It's the reward and the privilege of only those ones that will go all the way with that inner passion and inner desire to keep Hashem's will, to listen to the voice of Hashem between the lines, to recognize and to find the light of Hashem that comes between the cracks, in the hardest hours, not to drop Hashem, not to drop the hope, to have an honest conversation with Him and to ask for guidance, to ask for help, to ask for salvation, to ask for blessing from Him. That He is our only answer and only salvation. And He is accessible and close to everyone that calls Him with truth. And even if your honest truth is the lowest truth of them all, to tell him, Hashem, I'm a liar, I'm a liar, Hashem, I'm weak, Hashem, I am so awful, I don't know what to do with myself. If those are your honest thoughts, that's your truth, it will connect you to Hashem. It will deliver the blessings of Hashem to your place, to your dark spot and it will shine the light of Hashem into your darkness and it will illuminate all your life struggles and not only yours also the life of all of your surroundings in those situations will be blessed because of your honesty and your truth when you will ask for the Creator with an honest heart with a simple honest heart Hashem, I want you to really be part of my life. I want to find the real truth. I don't want to fake it. I don't want to lie. I don't want people to respect me. I want you to appreciate me. I want to do something good in my life. I want to find the real truth. What is the real purpose and mission of my soul in your world? Those words will deliver and bring the complete salvation and then complete redemption to the wide world. Honest, simple words of truth will connect us to Hashem. And we can never imagine the power and the true potential of us as individuals. You think to yourself that you're small, but you don't know who you are. You don't know the size of your soul, how much light you can channel down to this world. You don't know. You don't know. 
you look tiny in your own eyes, it's because you don't know who you are, Be'emet. Really, you don't know who you are. You don't know from which tree you become to be the one that you are. You're criticizing yourself, and you're hating yourself, and blaming yourself, and following other people's opinions about you, and, 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 and you misinterpret the messages of Hashem by not trying to connect yourself to Him from within, asking Him really, who am I, and what is the mission of mine, and what do you want from me, and what do you want me to do with my time, and how do you want me to spend my times and my days? When we will ask those questions from an honest place, we will receive direct and honest and clear answers to all of our questions. And they will solve all of our doubts, and they will answer all of our, all of our questions, and will find cure and answer to all of our problems. Amen. Thank you very much. Hashem bless you all. And uh, you should know that I was not making up all of that. It's the truth. It's really the truth. And it shines from within. People that are too scared to let you go and be who you are, are people that never found themselves. So they're afraid that you will find yourself and you will decide to walk away from them. Because they never found themselves, so they want you to come, and by you being company to them, you'll justify their bent and twisted way of not finding the real truth about themselves. That's why they need followers, that's why they need students, they, well, that's why they need their children around them, that's why they need you to have control on you. Because they're afraid that when you'll find yourself, you will open your wings and fly. And they're too scared to stay by themselves with their embarrassments. But we are not slaves, and we don't work for no one. At least I don't work for no one. And you're welcome to join me. <laughs> Quit your jobs! <laughs> That's it, the happy campers. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.